Good morning. First of all, thank you all for being here and for loving our country enough to be here. And I thought this morning the most appropriate issue to discuss is the issue of character. And I want to start, you can tell I'm getting older, I have to put these on, but I wanted to start with Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and it is character that produces hope. Character is tested most when you're challenged, when you're under duress. And believe me, being a conservative Republican in the state of New Jersey is duress. One million more registered Democrats than Republicans. A Democratic legislature for every day of my governorship. And the New York and Philadelphia media market every day. There is no doubt that as a conservative Republican in New Jersey, you're challenged. And when I was one of only three people, three Republicans, in the last 30 years to beat an incumbent Democratic governor, they told me there was no chance I could win. And one of the biggest reasons the press said I couldn't win was because I ran as what I am, an unabashedly pro-life Republican. Now, what does that mean once you become governor of New Jersey? What it means is that for eight years, they sent me Planned Parenthood funding in New Jersey, and for eight years, I vetoed it and we sustained every one of those vetoes. No Planned Parenthood funding for eight years. And being pro-life, I would suggest to all of you, has to be longer than the nine months in the womb. Every life I was taught is a precious gift from God. And that life and its gift doesn't end when the child is born, it only begins. And our need to protect that life only begins then. And so that's why when I look at children across our state and now across our nation who live in an educational system that gives them no chance and no hope to ever lift themselves out of poverty, that is a sin. It is a sin against what God gave them in the potential that he put inside of every little boy and little girl born into this country. And that's why we opened more charter schools than at any time in New Jersey history. That's why we gave parents parental choice. And what we need in this country is to radically change the education system so that every parent, regardless of how much money you make, gets to choose where their child goes and what they learn. That's gonna be the defining issue of the next 20 years in our country. And when I was U.S. Attorney, I worked with Congressman Chris Smith to make sure that human traffickers were prosecuted, not only in New Jersey, but all across our region. If we are going to stand up for the preciousness of life, we must stand up for the young women that are trafficked into this country, into the sex trade. Those people who profit from those young women need to be prosecuted and put in jail for the rest of their lives. I did the biggest one of those cases in the country's history. And character is important and has been important at every one of the moments in our country's history. Think about it. If in 1776, Washington and Adams and Jefferson and Franklin had decided to negotiate with King George, and not have the character and the courage it took to stand up for independence, which they knew had freedom and liberty, we'd be a smaller country. If in 1861, Abraham Lincoln decided to give the South away, rather than stand up and have the character to say that a house divided against itself cannot stand, we would not have the country that we have today. In 1941, if Franklin Roosevelt hadn't said, that Holocaust around the world and Nazi domination was something the United States was unwilling to live with, but well, we would have been a smaller country today, not the leader of the world that we became. 
And in 1981, if Ronald Reagan had been willing to live with a Soviet empire that killed and discriminated its own, against its own people, that squashed its faith, then we would not have seen nine years later the falling of the Berlin Wall and now a free and democratic Europe that helps to support the hope and the faith of each and every one of those people. Our faith teaches us, at least my Catholic faith teaches us, that character doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean that you're free of sin or faults. But what I believe my faith requires of me is when I do sin, when I do make mistakes, when people who work for me do the same, that I must admit it, that I must take responsibility, that part of getting forgiveness, whether it's from God or whether it's from the people who elected you when you make mistakes, is to first accept that responsibility and ask for forgiveness. That's what character really is. Because beware, everybody, of a leader who never makes mistakes. Beware of a leader who has no faults. Beware of a leader who says that when something goes wrong, it's everybody else's fault. And he goes and he blames those people for anything that goes wrong, but when things go right, everything is to his credit. Now, there are, there are a lot of people, a lot of people who wonder, after I was the first candidate to endorse Donald Trump in 2016, the very first, <laughs> after, after he made me chairman of his transition, after he made me chairman of his opioid and drug abuse commission, after, and this one will keep you up at night, everybody, after I played Hillary Clinton in debate prep. You won't be able to sleep thinking about that one tonight. And after I played Joe Biden in debate prep in 2020, why am I running for President of the United States? I'm running because he's let us down. He has let us down because he's unwilling. He's unwilling to take responsibility for any of the mistakes that were made, any, I, any of the faults that he has, and any of the things that he's done. And that is not leadership, everybody. That is a failure of leadership. And I, you can boo all you want, but here's the thing. Our faith teaches us that people have to take responsibility for what they do. People have to stand up and take accountability for what they do. And I, I cannot stand by, and as soon as I've started to be critical, after all of that, and after you offered me White House Chief of Staff, now what he does is call me names and belittle me. And I will tell you, if all you do, if all you do is disagree with someone, and in return you get that kind of treatment, I've joined a great list of Americans like Rex Tillerson and Jim Mattis and Mark Esper and Mick Mulvaney and John Kelly and all the rest. And you can love him all you want, but I will tell you, I will tell you that doing those kind of things makes our country smaller. It makes our country smaller and it makes us lesser. During the Revolutionary War, Abigail Adams asked her husband John if they were gonna win the war. And here's what John said. He said, I can't guarantee success in the war, but I can guarantee something better, that we deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, you never know what's gonna come across the desk of the President of the United States. It's not a litmus test of boxes checked. You need to know what's in here. We need to once again, as people of faith, put character first. If I'm President of the United States, I will put character first. I love each and every one of you for what you contribute to our country. I love that you are people of faith. I am too. And let's make America a country.
that cares once again about character and faith. Thank you all very much.